Okay, we are live with Warrior Women in Business podcast episode 54. This month has been so crazy in such a such a good way. I've been meeting like literally the most fabulous women. I can't even explain it. <laughs> you all have to watch the podcast and, and stay tuned with us and come to events. But, you know, it's Women's History Month. And I said, okay, it's Women's History Month. And March is a very long month for good yeah, I think it for good reasons. So I said, you know what? I want to find the most incredible women for the podcast and women, women that really have done things to help women, <laughs> you know, not just say that they've done it. And everybody knows we're women in business. That's what we're all about. And I think um, today's guest definitely exemplifies that. So before we get started, I wanted to share with those of you that are on um, from that are uh, fans of under wraps and uh, fans of new fans of warrior women in business and new women that I've been meeting literally like every single day. Wanted to share with you a little bit about warrior women in business, what it is uh, and its mission. So my name is Jasmine Sandler. I am the host and lead warrior woman. And uh, I started warrior women in business as a subset of my main company, JS Media. JS Media has been helping companies and individual executives and brands and primarily women build their brands so they can grow their careers and their businesses since 2006. Warrior Women in Business is intentionally a media company that helps women. And primarily we help female entrepreneurs and women in the arts. And the way that we do that is through this podcast series where I bring in hand-picked female leaders across industries to share their knowledge and intentionally cross industry. So if you are looking to get into like today's guest, the world of boxing or martial arts, you know, you don't know much about it. Carrie's going to share a lot today. Or if you're looking to get into finance or law or entertainment, you can flip through warrior women in business. And we probably interviewed a leader in that industry. We also do really interesting events uh, as someone that's been involved with a lot of organizations I always saw a gap in, a, in women's organization events to be not so boring. So I bring in the, we bring in the education, we bring in the social piece. And actually Carrie and I were just chatting about uh, possibly doing an event for Warrior Women that's gonna include boxing, food, fun, education, and inspiration. So with all that being said, I want to introduce Carrie Schechter, who is the owner, right? of Under Wraps Boxing and Jukebox Boxing in Brooklyn, New York, in a very concentrated area, growing area. So if you want to say hello, Carrie, that would be wonderful. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, Jazz. Thank you so much for having me on. An absolute honor and a privilege. Absolutely. And I, I feel the same. So if any of you have listened to last my last podcast with Luis Diaz of the Luisa Diaz Foundation, who is putting on the Mia Moore Gala in its 10th year, May 19th, of which Warrior Women is a partner in, you would know and understand the importance of women helping each other to defeat, defeat problems such as domestic violence, human trafficking, sexual abuse in different industries and in entertainment and in business. And so we're gonna talk about that today. We're also gonna talk a lot about Women's History Month and um, what's happening in Carrie's world. So just a little brief on Carrie. Um, she she's honestly amazing. So I I I attended one of her. Is it monthly sparring sessions that you hold? Uh, quarterly. Quarterly. Okay. So anyway, so I'm a I well also I'm a former competitive boxer. So I love boxing. I always call it a chess match. Most people don't understand it. Outsiders don't get it. I said I got into boxing to help my business, and it actually helped and to help me mentally. So everybody sees it as a physical thing, but I think it's extremely mental. <laughs> anyway, so I attended uh, one of her quarterly sparring events and it was literally like when I say standing room only, I mean, I had like a sliver of space. I thought it was going to fall on the, all, into the ring. So it was so good. And I said, this is a community leader. I have to have her on my podcast. Um, you know, Carrie does these events, but her background is really interesting. She actually comes from the entertainment industry and as a musician and someone that supports women in the arts, you know, I've always thought it was really important to help women in the arts and entertainment. And Carrie has some deep <laughs> roots there. And she has been, I think, a light in that area to help women um, defeat some of the, <laughs> let's say, issues in male dominated industries. So it's interesting that she went from one male dominated industry industry entertainment into yet another male dominated industry boxing so all that being said 
I'd like to start some rapid fire and some questions for you, Carrie. Um, let's start with your journey. Tell us in your own words, you know, how you got to being the only female boxing gym owner in New York City and what that looks like. Uh, well, let's see. It started back in April, back in 1922. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay. No, I kind of, I was fortunate to have a hard knocks life. Um, I was fortunate to have uh, a lot of challenges in my life and a lot of things that I had to fight through. Nothing was handed to me. I had to hustle and create the destiny that I wanted. Um, and I failed a lot. I failed a lot. And that's what I think I tell everyone. The reason I'm as successful as I am is I failed more than everybody else. And when you understand that, there's no ceiling for you. Um, it started with, I was a kid that followed my dreams. We didn't have money. We didn't have anything. I had to find my own way. That led to me living on the streets for a little while. And uh, that was by choice for a little while. And then it wasn't. And uh, you learn real quick, no one's coming to save you at three o'clock in the morning. So uh, you got to figure out your own world and your own hands and your own ability to stand or to fall and how to process things on your own, right? Um, when it's your day, when it's not your day. And so I learned a lot on the streets. It actually was part of what made me who I am. Um, and then at one point I got really lost and I saved enough money and I took a one-way ticket to Hawaii and I lived there for nine months. Um, and that truly changed my life. That was a completely different level of consciousness, the way people live over there. And I couldn't have been more grateful to, again, be faced with enormous amounts of challenges, <laughs> uh, being homeless over there as well. But um, all of that led to me, I was a photographer since I was a kid. I got myself off the streets and put myself back through school with a solid hustle. Uh, I started shooting billboards and became one of the top music, fashion and celebrity uh, photographers. Uh, I had a good 20 year run that was incredible. On the side, I watched everybody on my set falling apart. Um, I saw the bruising, I knew the stories. I'm someone that people love to confide in, it's a gift. And um, it was a lot. So I started wanting to protect my people that were on set. Um, I was boxing and I was in Muay Thai as well. And yeah. so I started coaching on the side. A bunch of gyms were like, can you try coaching? There's something different when you coach. And so I ended up coaching. I worked at all the top gyms in New York. Um, I really loved it. I loved what it did for me. And then an opportunity arose where I got to open my own gym and create a space that I never had that was needed in the world. Um, and that was going to take more balls and more courage and more risks and more failure. And uh, that doesn't scare me for shit because I've already lost it all. And I know that there is nothing bad down there. You just pick yourself up and you get back to it. So I'm not really afraid of much except for failing myself or failing my people. Um, I will not. So I really, I, it's the best person you could have in it. I've created something that is very much needed. And I think that's why Jukebox has one of the strongest communities you can find at any gym or establishment in the world. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, thank you for sharing some of the sensitive subjects. I've had women share very sensitive things on this podcast and it's like refreshing because this is how we actually get to know each other and help each other, right? <clears throat> Instead of hiding behind this mask. So yeah. let's talk about community. Uh, I like I witnessed what you're doing with the community and I think for all the locals, including this restaurant here group that I interviewed, I don't know, a few weeks ago. So um, let's talk about local female businesses. You know, I think a lot of times it is about embracing the community. It's not that easy. So how how have you done it? What can you share with our audience, women that are looking to do that? Some things about community development. Um, hmm, that's a good question. Um, honestly, there's a million ways that they'll tell you in books. You know, go out, reach out to other businesses, try this, try that. None of it worked for me. Not one thing anyone ever recommended for me worked for me. And I'm not going to say it's bullshit because it's obviously working for other people, right? It just didn't work for me. Um, I actually found a lot of other women-owned businesses were the first ones to try and rip me down. Um, uh, odd securities. It's coming. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. Oh, it's, it's just like clients. It's good that you're telling. It's good that you're telling. You're telling. Yeah, really. women. Women tend to rip other people down, and I'll tell you, there's a very important lesson there. I never had to unscrew someone else's light bulb to make the room brighter. If I need the room brighter, or the world needs to be brighter, then I help everybody screw the light bulbs in. That's, That's how the right. lights get turned on. That's My right. light bulb is not dimmer because 10 million other people are tuned in. Right. Mm -hmm. My light bulb is brighter because we're all connected on the same energy of. That's making things better, right? So um, yeah, I think the best thing you can do is just be your authentic true self. I am 
completely honest and transparent, possibly too much so, uh, with clients. <laughs> they they know everything that's going on. I introduce them to people. We talk to people. I think it's an energy and a vibe. Listen, I was homeless. Um, nobody gives a fuck about you, right? But yeah. I developed community. I would go around. I would start talking to people. People would watch my back. How did I get myself off the streets? I made hemp jewelry. I did crystal jewelry. I made didgeridoos. I did all kinds of wild shit, but none of that was legal either. But all these other homeless people, I did so much to help them out. They helped me out. So when it was when the cops were coming or whatever was going on, it's consistently been where other people have your back. And in a world full yeah. of abrasion, it is so important to have something where you know you're safe. You're not judged. I give people silence. I allow you to just speak. You have space to be, exist, and express yourself. And sometimes you're going to fumble those words and people, oh, that's not right. Oh, no, I don't do that. I'm going to let you fumble your words and then figure them out and find the right way to say them. And you have to give people space. And so we give people space at the gym. We give you space to be who you are. It's hard. And then we lift them up. Hey, man, that jab just got better in the last 10 minutes. And I'm really proud of what you did. And you don't, you don't bombard people. You don't make it about you. It's about them. What do they need right now? I walk yeah. in the room. Like, I don't have a single class plan ever. I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't need one. But I walk in and I look at my students and I'm like, ah, oh, energy's off. Mm -hmm. Something's going on. Everyone feels down. All right, fuck it. I'm not going to do that. We're going to start off with the game. And so it's it's about understanding how to get them to communicate with each other and around each other to be able to let go and free themselves of all the things that are holding them down. For the next hour with me, you're on a vacation from your life. And after you finish that hour, those endorphins will be firing, the cortisol will drop, and you'll have much more clarity to be able to move forward. It's not a pill. It's life. There is no progress without struggle. If you are struggling right now, that's incredible. That means you're about to level up. This is something to welcome. Change comes with a little bit of grief, right? Because you got to let your old self down. You got to let your, not down, I'm sorry, die. You got to let all these old beliefs that you have go, right? To become someone new. It's beautiful. Yeah. So we give them that opportunity. And instead of being like, oh my God, my life's so hard. Great. Okay. It's hard. Great. Let's talk about what you did. Let's talk about where you are. And let's remind you where you came from. I always tell my clients, um, you know, what's your track record? Every hard thing that you faced in this lifetime so far you made it through because you're standing here. So logic Excellent. combats emotion. And the logic is you're a hundred percent successful at overcoming hardships, a hundred percent because you're here. So yeah. this too will pass and you too will get through it. And it's going to hurt a little bit. That's great. You're evolving into a new version of yourself. And now you get to be even better, even stronger and face all new opportunities that you wouldn't have been able to do if you hadn't learned what you needed to learn. Everything in this world is for you, not to you, right? Mm, well, yeah, absolutely. So I do a lot of uh, studying <laughs> of female leaders um, in psychology, honestly, and philosophy quite a bit, actually, every morning. So I couldn't agree with you more. I want to talk about the, because I, I was having lunch with a colleague yesterday, and we were talking about, again, this repeatable pattern, this topic about hustling and struggling with women in business, right? So let's talk about, how you see the mental aspect of what your client, your female clients go through when they come to you, whether it's class or a program or sparring session, and how you think they utilize from the gym out into their lives. Because I think I could share my experience, but you're, you're running it. So what do you see and what have you seen and where have you seen growth? Um, and some things that you think that can help women that, again, it's like I always, I keep hearing, I'm struggling, I'm hustling, I'm struggling, I'm hustling. And I just want to kind of put a stop to it so that they can reflect. So talk about that from the gym level. Um, I would say boxing, as you know, as a competitive boxer, boxing is a lot like life. It's chess. It ain't checkers. It's chess. It's a smart person sport. That's what I tell people all the time. This is a smart person sport. And in fighting, and you know this, you can move your feet to get out of a bad situation. You can move your shoulders. You can head roll. You can body. You can do everything. But sometimes you're just backed up and you can't go any further. And you got to bite down on that fucking mouth guard 
and turtle up. And so you're going to take a couple before you can return, right? That's just part of it. But in understanding that in boxing, there's chaos. Hits are coming at you. It's not in your control. Chaos. Yeah. Listen, that's like very has their good. own plan. You have your plan. Your coaches are screaming at you. But you, it's one thing and one thing only. I am going to let it unfold. I'm not walking in there going, this is how it's going to be. And they're going to treat me like this. And this has happened before. Great. So what? So you got a bunch of information. You got a bunch of knowledge, like a lawyer going in there with a little bit going, okay, I know this person always pivots left. All right. So I know that. So when they go to pivot, I jump over it and I pop. Right. So you just look for habits and patterns. And when you can figure out habits and patterns, including your own, and then know when things are actually punching you in the face. We just went through a world pandemic. Right. And I kept telling yes. people all the time, you're in a good place because your right. ancestors <laughs> have pulled on through it's such a good point. Prayer. What's that? I said, that's such a good point. I feel like people just forgot. I oh, totally forgot. They forgot. And now they're whining about something else. I'm like, whoa, you can go outside now. No, this it's, it's funny. So go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. But if we got to a pandemic and you're alive now, that means yeah. your ancestors lived through the Black Plague and they've lived through every World War One, everything that's gone on, they survived through. Whether you're in, you know, like all different things in all different places of the world, your ancestors and your body was strong enough to get that's here. Right. So you're already in a good place. Now you made choices when you were born, whether you were going to snort some shit, eat some shit. We all made choices. And so we're faced with that. And now we can go, shit, this is hitting not healthy people. I need to move more. You know, also it feels good. Right. But yeah. if you got there, you're already in a good place. Right. And when you got to something, when the whole world shut down, you made it through, didn't you? You pivoted. You found different ways. For those two weeks, it was the nicest the entire world has ever been. And then we forgot. Right. Absolutely. And then we came all the other shit. We had opportunity in those two weeks. And so in those two weeks, the birds started to return, right? The fish started to return. Yes. Again. The whole world changed. But we couldn't let that happen, right? We had to bring it back. Oh, yes, man. believe me. Oh, Carrie, we could talk about that forever. But <laughs> in life, you guys get that opportunity every day. Every day you have an opportunity to present yourself how you choose to present yourself, to fuck up, to fail, to blow it, or to succeed. I mean, listen, it's, you don't grow in the sun, you grow in the rain. And so for me, like some people are like, I need a pill. I need this. I need that. Like one of my clients said to me the other day, she's very nervous. She has a big thing on Friday. So she was going to take a beta blocker. No, get up and work out. What? Yeah. yeah. Get up and give me 20 minutes of a workout. Sure. Go run with your dog. Give me 10 yeah. fucking minutes. Let your body has everything you need. Don't look outside. It's all in here. So like someone said this to me when I lived in Hawaii and I loved it. We go to Pluto, Mars, Venus, out, 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 out. I need help, out, out. We haven't even seen our own Earth's core. So yeah. we haven't even gone in. We are, we are stars wrapped in skin. We have all the answers. Do you need them? I don't know, because the mystery of figuring it out is kind of sexy, right? But yeah. if you're just stars wrapped in skin and we're all connected on some route, I agree. What are you doing? You're creating most of your own shit. Like, even with the shit where people are like, oh, it's a boys club. It's a what? I don't give a fuck. I don't acknowledge it. Oh, you I hear you. I'm home with you. Like, I'm here to do my fucking mission. And my mission is to make sure that as many people as I can, I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to put them in the light. I'm going to help them become whatever legend they want to become. It could be, it could be, I want to be the best mom in the world. It could be, I want to be in Sony Records. Great. Oh, let's do it. I worked for Sony Records for 20 years. I mean, not just them, but I was a freelancer. Very difficult world. They don't give a oh, shit. The entertainment world, fuck. believe me. I know. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's fuck. Abusive. It's abusive. It's abusive. <laughs> right. So let I've got it. so much to talk to you about. So um, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about abuse a little bit. And um, you know, two parts. And I know this from the boxing world. So self-abuse and then abuse that's inflicted upon you. Um, I'm sure you've seen that with your clients. So what do you tell them or how do you kind of role model for them and help them get out of those things and try, start treating themselves better so others can treat them better? Um, I mean, first, it's always like, how bad is the situation? Right. And I say this to people a lot. Is what you're facing a paper tiger or a real tiger? Because our bodies read them both fight or flight. We have the same reaction if it's, or if it's, oh my God, I'm five minutes late. What am I going to do? We have the same reaction. It's just the way your chemicals work. 
So the first thing to do is to just go, okay, is this a paper tiger or a real tiger? A real tiger is right there and that shit is coming for you. So immediate action and that's that's flight and fright, right? Paper tiger, it feels like that, but it's not that big a deal. So first we got to figure it out. Like this feels like it could be the end of the world, but it's not. No one's taking a bat to my mom's head. No one's cutting my grandma's ear off right now. Right. Okay, yeah. It just might get my head reamed or I might lose the job. Okay. Yeah. This is what I have to accept based on the current situations. It's out of my hands. I can show up and do the best I can. And that's it. That's it. So the big part of it is just removing the fact that you can't control shit. You can only control yourself. And that's a lot to control. So oh, if yeah. I control myself, I can walk into any situation, the way I present myself, the way I talk to someone. I never say, hey, I'm sorry. You know, or, I'm sorry. I took me too long to get back to you. I start with, thank you so much for your patience. Because now I just gave you the power. Thank you for giving your patience because it took me a while to get back to you. I'm not, I'm not sorry. Sorry is like a weird thing. Like, thank you. I'm always going to empower the other person. So first figure out what it is, paper tiger, real tiger. And then we have to start dissecting it when it's personal abuse. There, there's a lot of like deep rooted things. So I just ask people, I'm like, all right, so what happened? And then I sit uh, in silence. You're going to fill the silence, right? Well, this happened when I was five, 40 right. now. Okay, so we're holding on to something. So what was it that made it so horrible? So you face it. If I face my fear, I am free. And a lot of times when you face it, it's like, all right, what really was this? I'm, and what they usually start saying, I'm mad that I handled it that way. I'm mad that when they picked on me, I didn't defend myself. Okay, so then the first person to forgive is yourself. So first I'm gonna forgive this person. Whatever they were going on, I don't know their story. I don't know what was going on. Today I walked to the gym and both my socks were quitting. People could have looked at me like she's having a great life. Both of my socks were halfway down my shoes and it hurt. It was terrible. Right? You never know someone else's story, right? Someone's mom could have just died. Anything could happen. You don't know what's going on. So why ever they were bullying you, we all can read the stories as to why. Who cares? That's your journey. That's your problem. I forgive you for the fact that you aren't mature, wise, or evolved enough in understanding how to handle your emotions and that I was the threat because I was what you secretly wanted to be. You were so jealous of me. Mm, hard for you. I am pretty wonderful. So I forgive you for that. I forgive you for everything you went through and I wish you the best. Our contracts ripped up and good luck out there. And now I forgive me. I forgive me for maybe I didn't handle myself the way I wanted to. So what about that happened and how can I make that better? But the forgiveness is the first part to set yourself free. So first I got to forgive you and I forgive me. And then what about it sucked and how can I fix it so it doesn't happen again? And if it does happen again, okay, listen, things happen again and again when like we just haven't figured our shit out. And so it's like this constant reminder, like, listen, you need to get through this wall. Like, and as I say to people, some walls are meant to be broken down. Sure, sure, sure. But some walls are actually there for you to put a hand up and take a second and rest. That that's Oh, a they are. <laughs> I could tell you all about accidents. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, you can. So many stories about accidents. And it's like, why did this happen? And, pro you know, through your stories that you shared as well, you know, some of the things that happened to you, it seems like were walls for you to figure out. Like you said, you know, you went to Hawaii that changed your life. And I think it's a lot about change and going back to the meeting that I had yesterday and the meetings that I've been having a lot with women is they trying to find the answers and 9 million roads. I don't think that's the answer, right? I don't, don't go to Pluto. Asking at different roads and reading a thousand books is necessarily the answer. No, it's not the answer. I like that you use the word silence. Yeah. Good. Silence can't be misquoted. And that yeah. is the thing I tell everyone all the time. Silence cannot be misquoted. So it's mm -hmm. like the first time you spar and you, if, if you can remember, I remember. Oh my God. Oh, I remember the first time I sparred because the girl was like, um, I weighed one, I was a 127 fighter and uh, she was like 160. <laughs> mm. She killed me, you mm. know, because I wasn't prepared and I actually didn't even know what I was doing. So yeah, I remember, but you know what I did? I was like, screw this. I'm getting, I love boxing anyway, because it was mental. <laughs> you My know? first time, it was all men. I had a rotate. It was oh. 20 to 30 Russian men, all oh. big, all, I was. Oh, wow, that's pretty badass. 24, I think at the time, I'm about like 128 now, but um, not big of a difference, but uh, I was about 124, 125. And they were, there was not one person in that room under 165. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. <laughs> but I, one thing I did know is I just got back from work shooting. So I had red lips and I had really cheap red lipstick on that, like, you just couldn't get off. Like, I so. Oh, I yeah, the matte lips. I went in and I'm like, red I like lip. the matte lipstick. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, it was like, it was that cheap okay. <laughs> crap. And uh, so we start going and the sweat, of course, is affecting my lipstick. I don't even remember I'm wearing lipstick. I'm like trying to get the mouth guard in. I'm like, that is hilarious. Oh, terrible. <laughs> and I remember that every two minutes I had to fight another guy. And so I'm going around all 30 dudes and I'm fighting them. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to slip. Oh, uh, yeah, right. around the, yeah, I'm going to slip. Right. So at the end of the whole thing, it went on for four hours. OK. And I. Wow. This it, is a crazy story. No, but this is Russian. It's a Russian gym. And there is a Russian. Wait, you were in Russia? In, what's that? Were you in Russia? Oh, no. This was here. Interesting. Was better. Queens Russian men. <laughs> from I know. Well, I'm half Russian, so I'm so where where's my Russian community? But go ahead. This is a very interesting story. So they at the end of class, the sensei looked and realized what had happened. At this point, I'm still like this. And he goes, everybody in line in size order. And so everybody gets in line. And in this gym was white gloves only, was allowed to be worn. And he goes, Everybody put your gloves out like that. And so everybody puts their gloves out. No, I'm the shortest and I'm the smallest. So I'm all the way at the end. I don't, and I'm not even in their gloves. I just started, you know? So I don't even know what's going on. I'm like, what is this? This is so weird. Okay, like zombies. Like I'm just so high from starting. <laughs> like I'm just like, what? Right, of course. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes, Carrie, come here. And he goes, look at the gloves. <laughs> across all 30 gloves was my lipstick smeared across the it was just a red strip. And then he goes, look in the mirror. And I turn around and I was a clown. My red lipstick was yeah. all over my face. And they were so happy because they didn't want a woman there. So they were like, ah, she'll never be back. Fuck that. Six hours right, later. Said, That's my point. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're like, thinking, man, that was, that was fun. <laughs> I, I had a great time. I was like, was that supposed to be theory? That was great. That was so great. I sucked. That, and that was so great. It it right. felt so nice to suck and to be like, wow, I'm like a student. Like it would have been one thing if I did this for 10 uh, years and it was that bad. I felt shitty. But I'm like brand new to this. This is great. Can't get any lower. And like, that's, well, I, I love that you bring that up because I think that's really a really extremely important point that you bring up because I think it traverses everything. Because I'm also, you know, a singer and business owner. And it, it, it is that thinking yourself as a student can help you, right? Can it help you learn more, think less about yourself? Uh, so, I mean, do you think that you're still a student of boxing? Like, tell us about that, a student of business. Like, how does that help you to continue to kind of think? I, I said to someone the other day, I went to this gala. It was amazing. Lori Sokol ran it. And she's the most, one of the most humble people I've ever met. The The kind of amount of star power that was in the room was crazy. And she's brought them all in, yet she's completely humble and still a student. So talk about how that helps you in, in business and in boxing. Oh, yeah. You have to walk into anything a student and open. The second you're closed and you think you know what you're doing, get ready to fall on your fucking face and ship a tooth. So make sure you got dental insurance. You <laughs> never know what you're doing. Everything is a new adventure and it's exciting. You've done it before. Like I tell everyone, listen, this is really how you do business. This is really how you get successful. It's 100 dirty reps. So you've got to do it enough times that it becomes unreasonable for you to suck at it. That's it. Mm-hmm. So if you're still sucking at it, that's okay. You got about 50 more reps. And when you do it enough times, it's like the first time I went live on Instagram, I was like, I don't even know. I started talking about penguins. I don't know shit about penguins. I don't even know what I was talking about. I was like, they're black and they're white. So come to my gym. I mean, what the fuck? I was a mess, but like, so what? So then I got on, I did it again and I did it again and I did it again. And slowly but surely I got better Uh, to some people. Some people might still say it's shit. That's okay too. Have your fucking opinion. Take it home with you. I don't give a shit. I know who I am, right? So I don't worry about that. The confidence and the resilience comes from doing it again and again and again. But I'm eternal student. I hire mentors all the time. Um, I work with that mentor until I've grown what I've needed to grow there. And then I switch over. Um, I have a, I actually have the greatest chat group ever with um, the number one golf coach in the UK and the number one cricket coach in the UK. The three of us met during one of these mentors and we have become like a little pod where we check in with each other all the time and we help each other grow. We're always trying new things. We're always, we figured out everything. If you're always a student, it, 
there's so much to learn. And like, and I'll just, I just want to give a slight little plug to someone. I don't know if I'm allowed to, but I hope it's okay. My favorite coach is named Victor Rojas and you might know him. Oh, little plug to Victor. I, I, I was going to bring him up today. <laughs> he, I think is one of the greatest kept secrets in boxing. I think this guy's got one of the highest IQs that's possible. I tell every single one of my students, you're a fucking moron if you miss Monday night with Vic, because this is the, like, I go to Victor to help me. Victor helped my jab. And he's like, all right, kid. And he, just, he doesn't say kid, but he, he helps me. And like, we both went to SVA at different times, but close enough, you know, I respect him. I love him. I honor him. Um, I think he's one of the greatest coaches of all time. And I think it's one of the best kept secrets. I wish I had known him when he was starting out. I would have made this man one of the biggest names there was. He didn't have someone like that in the corner that understood the business aspect. It was just a gym that was like not figuring it out. But I wish I was there because I would have. But regardless, this guy is honestly one of the greatest things ever. So for me to have someone like that, hey, Vic, help me out here. And he'll be like, what the hell did you just do? <laughs> that was the worst shit I've ever seen. You know, and I love that about him. That's what makes it so great. And what and it's like every day that there's another jab class from someone that I respect, I'm going. My jab, I'm going to work on that until the day I die. Like it can always get better. There's something more I can. That's what's so cool about boxing. You never plateau. It's not like, all right, two plus two is four and that's it. No, it's like, never. no, man. It's no. like, oh, I could do that. I could move like that. Oh, that. Oh, my God. And so you're always like, oh, learning and changing ideas and trying new things. And that is exactly in, in business. So, I mean, in business, every including this morning, I was like, you know what? Mm, I was meditating and thinking, okay. What do I need to do to change this in my business? This is not, this wall is here, right? How am I going to get around this wall? And a lot of times I go back to boxing, honestly, and think, okay, well, what did I do when I won that match, right? How did I win that match when I had no breath left? Which to me is the biggest challenge of boxing and singing <laughs> is the breath. So, you know, what did I do? Well, I have to think differently. And how do I include others to support me? And I think I that that too, is just as a side note, I want you to think about when you lost. I think that would help you break this wall down better. You won without breath. That's fine. But the conclusion was winning. I mm -hmm. would say what happened when I lost? Maybe when it was left in the ref's hand or the judge's hands when maybe you shouldn't have. But the day that you lost, that's the one that's going to have a little bit of an answer so that you don't lose this time. That's yeah. what I lost. The whenever oh, I've I faced hardest times, I've gone to the times I lost the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that usually that, had the answer. That is, then that has a lot to do with confidence and lack of confidence in my personal experience, if we're talking about boxing. So, um, and I think that confidence and believing in yourself is critical. You wouldn't have got, you wouldn't have found a home, right? If you didn't have confidence in yourself or built a business. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have much confidence. I, I had confidence, not so much in myself, but in the vision, like the universe gave uh, me the vision. In the like vision. other people thought I was nuts. They were like, what the fuck are you doing? You have no money. What the fuck are you doing? And I was like, yeah, but the universe didn't give you the vision. The universe gave me the vision because I'm the one that has to see this through. So I'm yeah. gonna, and if I fall on my face, I fall on my fucking face. I'd rather spend the rest of my life going, I tried and I failed, then going, I wonder what it, like, I even did a time on a, on a, on a, what is it, As the World Turns, the soap opera. I literally just walked up to a dude and I was like, I think I need to be on the soap opera. And he was like, who the fuck are you? And I said, Carrie, my name's Carrie. Anyway, so I think I should be, and I was like, I walked away and I was like, what an idiot, why did you do that? And then two hours later, I got a phone call from As the World Turns and they go, someone just reached out to us and we were giving you a role tomorrow. And I went, okay. You never know unless you try. <laughs> Yeah, you got you. Never listen, know unless you try. Questions are a gift. You just don't do it where you expect shit back. It's just an opportunity. Everything is an opportunity. If someone says yes. no, so what? So turn that way. There's something else over there. You have an end game for yourself. Like I want to live in abundance, be happy. Whatever your end game is, we have an end game. And so everything kind of conspires to get you there. Just because you think you got to go left. The universe already knows there's a fucking pitfall. There's a fire. There's fucking a uh, Sasquatch. There's so much shit over there. I know you don't want to go right because that one building is really fucking ugly. But if you go right, your end game is right there. So the half the battle is you going, you're swimming upstream. What the fuck are you doing? You're blowing all your energy swimming against the stream. The yes. stream is telling me to go this way. So I'm going to take all that power I have and I'm going to let the universe guide me through. I may not very, understand why this is happening. Very Muay Thai of you. <laughs> very Muay Thai. I remember 
when this was, but pre-boxing and pre-Victor, which is like a billion years ago, um, <laughs> uh, I was training with somebody. I don't remember who it was. And it was in Brooklyn. And because I used to be a, a kickboxer and then I moved up here and I got into boxing. And he said to me, you got to go with the energy. And when he was showing that to me, I could feel the energy, although it was invisible. And I think that that is so important to understand, to kind of, I think what you're saying is recognize when the energy is pushing against you, right? And yeah. then recognize when it's going forward for you, right? So how do you, how do, you do that in your experience with the energy? Um, energy you you have to be kind of open and just kind of allow things to happen and mold it as you can. You just, you can't control energy, man. You you just have to adapt with it. I tell people it's, I can't remember exactly what it's called, meng sheng. I'm going to say it terribly. I shouldn't say it at all. But uh, it's the vision thing. Like in martial arts, you go eye to eye with your opponent. I'm intimidating you. In boxing, right. you're here, right? right? In Muay Thai, it's a triangle. You go from belly button up because legs are there. But when you're there, and it's like people used to say to me when I'd hold mitts for them, they're like, where the fuck are you looking? How are you so aware of everything? Because it looks like I'm just like zone because right. I'm allowing my peripheral vision to completely open. There are hits oh, coming from every happy. other fucking angle. If that's I just look here, I'm missing everything over here. That's so right. I I mean, you're going to get nailed. <laughs> yeah. And there's a way to do it like physically, like in a, in a thing, if you go like that and wiggle your fingers, when you let your vision get to the wiggling of the fingers, all of a sudden you're going to notice, like I tell people to do it in the park. All of a sudden you're wide and in your mind you go squirrel three o'clock, movement six o'clock, movement 2 p.m., movement. And then you start to focus on a tree and you're like, wait, 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 let me get it back. And when you do that a little bit every day with everything that comes at you, it's like, okay, someone's saying to me, I'm mad because of blah, blah, but that's not really why they're fucking mad. So it's like, all right, I understand you're mad because of this. And I appreciate you sharing this with me right now. Let's talk a little bit about more about what's going on so we can make sure we can do our best to not let it happen again or figure out where something went wrong. And it's amazing when you give someone that space that they're like, oh, it wasn't really a bad, you know, like I had someone once that was like, your employee did whatever. I was like, all right, then I'm going to fire them. Oh, no, no, no. They didn't really do anything bad. I think I was having a bad day. Oh, <laughs> I was never going to fire my fucking employee. That's my family. They're <laughs> right. And the clients aren't right in my gym. I still <laughs> but um but you know if you give people opportunity to to really focus because half the time we don't even know why we're mad right like we fight with our boyfriends and they're like i don't even know why you're so angry and you're like that makes two of us still mad though <laughs> like, right hey, hey, argument back. over you gotta uh, you gotta just kind of broaden your vision and i think you gotta listen you you i'm afraid and i do it anyway that's it i'm scared shitless I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Half the yeah. things I do don't work out. And yes, I understand. <laughs> most overnight <laughs> successes take 10 to 20 years. So if What's you that? want to start a project, you got to tell Wait, yourself. What, what did you say takes 10 to 20 years? An overnight success. Oh, agreed. Sometimes it takes 30 to 40 years. Yep. So yeah. you got to tell yourself, if I'm going to embark on this for the next five to 10 years, I'm going to have to knuckle down. Or do however you want to say it. I don't know. Sometimes I say things and people are like, that's dirty in the youth now. And I don't know these things. Um, <laughs> so it's, you got to <laughs> go, listen, for the next couple of years, I'm going to be completely focused on what I need to do. And I'm going to start with these steps. When other people start giving you advice, are they doing what you're doing? Do they care about you? Because I, I care about- No, they, they usually don't. And you know, it's interesting is a lot of times they're expelling what's, what challenges they're going through. Yeah, I've been learning that quite a bit as I through this podcast, honestly, not it's through my true. guests, but just through people. People it's project. So interesting that you think it's, oh, I should take this advice, but many times that advice is not thought through. You know, they they don't have the experience, <laughs> and maybe they're just sharing pain with you. So I think um, judging what works for you is what you're saying. I tell people like you can't judge luck because you have no hindsight's twenty twenty. So oh, it's like it's that old Taoist uh, fable with like there's a man yeah. and his son, whatever. And like good things happen and everyone's like, oh, what good luck. And then bad things happen and everyone's like, what bad luck. But at the end, the son breaks his leg and I, the whole neighborhood's like, oh, what bad luck. You oh, have. I remember this. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then two days later, the, the government comes to take all the sons into war, but his son can't be taken. You know, you really never know how things are going to unfold because the universe isn't binary. Computers are binary. We made binary. We made graph paper. But like the world ain't graph paper. The world is a fluid plate of spaghetti that we're just fluid. trying to figure out. And so first thing is to just 
open your hands, open your mind, open your heart and open your eyes. You're going to do the best you can. You read a couple of books, you talk to a couple of mentors, but that's it. And then it, it's basic. Everything is kind of basically the same. Like when I started in photography, I, I was like, it, I was, I was, again, I took myself from being homeless. So there's no money. There's nothing. I'm barely making it. I can barely afford food or soap or anything. Like I'm just doing the bare necessities. Like it was, it was hard. And so I walked in, a, I found a hair salon near all the celebrities and near where a lot of the models went down in LA. And so I went down there and I just went, Hey, I'm shooting headshots and I had a price that was high, ridiculous for the fact I had no no level to call, charge that much, but I did. And I said, every single person you send me, if they tell me that you sent me, I'm going to send you 50 bucks. And they were like, who are you? And I was like, hey, Carrie, listen, here's my card. Um, here's this. Anyone that you send to me that says Heather sent to me, Becky said, whatever, whoever sent them to me, just give me your address. I'm going to send you 50 bucks or I'm going to sell you 50 bucks. Like, that's it. And so all of a sudden, you know, the first two weeks, nothing. But then all of a sudden I got one, she got, and so I sent that 50 bucks immediately. As soon as I booked the job and I got the payment, I sent the 50 bucks. She sent me five more. Okay. So now she just got 250 bucks. She wasn't doing shit. She was just telling people to come. Now her friends are getting all this extra money. And so I'm helping. It's a reciprocity. All you're doing is saying, come to me. They're coming to me. And then the same thing for the person. Hey, did you love that headshot? Did you love it? Was it amazing? Did I just help you get a couple of jobs? Tell your friends. Anyone that you tell, I'm going to give you another shot. You need a swimsuit shot coming up. You got a job coming up. I'll do it. I'll take care of your reel. I got you. Tell, just make sure your friend tells me it's you. And so next thing I know, I have 100 agents. Everyone's like, you need an agent. Fuck you. I don't need shit. I just, my own self. And so I just showed up. And so same with the gym. Hey man, anyone that comes to my gym that like says that they came from you, I'm going to give you a free month. I'm going to give you this, 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 and this. Um, And it's a reciprocity. Right. Like during COVID, they found that um, re- like like um, clothing stores and stuff that had candy and stuff at the front. Like if they gave you something, wipes, masks, whatever, people felt 87 percent obligated to buy something in your store, even if it was something super small. They felt they had to do something because you gave something. It's reciprocity. It's human psychology. So if you start living everything like, that, hey, man, I don't know what I'm doing. I want to start a dog walking service or I want to start a dog daycare. Oh, go to all the dog walkers. Everyone that suggests ones to you, you get 50 bucks. All of a sudden, these people are just getting easy money. They love recommending you as long as you're doing a good job. And then you help them out. Like this is, this is how, and then all of a sudden you got a community and then you got a bunch of people working for you. It's honestly, when you break it down into basics, it is extremely easy. I had no business education and I went from zero. Everyone I graduated with, almost all of them ended up at Jamba Juice, except for like four of us who turned in a like top tier. I yeah. turned in a top tier, not because of who I knew or who I fucked or anything else. I turned in a top tier because I kept showing up and I kept showing up and I figured shit out. I knew when Rolling Stone went on lunch. So I knew to drop my book off at that time. And I knew that they weren't going to take my book. They were going to tell me to bring it down to the basement. But I went at 2.30 because I'd get in that elevator with that art director and I'd take my earbud out for one second. I'd be like, hey, man, so sorry to interrupt you. What shoes are those? Man, those are so cool. Anyway, so sorry, so sorry. My bad. I uh, hope you have a great day. And I put it back on. Why are you here? Oh, I'm a photographer. Well, I'm an art director. Oh, I know, I know. But you're on your lunch break. Thank you so much. Love those shoes. <laughs> and then I would leave. Hey, bye, man. Thanks so much. An hour later. Hey, I had a chance to look at your book. I, I didn't ask you for shit. I just said something nice to you. I just timed myself, right? So there's a million avenues to make anything work. You just got to be open and willing to do it. And you got to be uncomfortable and you got to be willing to fail. Yeah. And you know that you're going to look like a fool 99% of the time. So what? Yeah. So it's what? It's true. You got to look like a fool. <laughs> like when I started photography, everyone was like, oh, you must be sleeping with people to get all these jobs. Honey, No. But no. I would have much bigger jobs. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, none of that happened. But I, I understood the fact that we both started at the same time. And in that time, I trained for a marathon. I ran a marathon and I won the marathon. But they hadn't gotten up from that couch in that whole amount of time. And so their ego was shattered right now. Because how did she just do it when we were both the same? But I got straight A's and she got some B's. I don't understand that. So it's like their ego is so shattered. They got to come up with some reason as to why you were able to be so successful. No, honey, you can have it too. You just got to get your fucking ass up from the couch. But 99% of people in this world do fuck all. I could give you the exact science to build any business in this world and only 1% is going to do it. 99% of people do fuck all. They spend all the money on the education. They do all this other shit or they just sit. They just don't do it. The reason that I'm doing it is I'm doing it. And I'm like, oops. Right. It, takes, oops I was say, it takes it takes like what you were saying is it takes action, 
but you also had the vision and the belief in yourself. And I, I, think I don't even know if I believed in myself. I, I mean, I'm talking about the photography. You wouldn't walk oh, in yeah. somewhere and say you're going to do a headshot if you had no, if you thought you were going to do a bad job. So I, think, I didn't um, know if I, I actually wasn't sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll be quite honest, just so that if people are listening to this that are like, but I don't have the confidence. I didn't really, I can talk a good game. I really can. But yeah. what it really came down to was I was really hungry. I'm hungry. I'm not sure if I'm going to be in my apartment. I don't know how I'm going to pay for my next semester at school. My mom needs money back. She lent me some. She's struggling and she's not eating because of me. So it was more so like I, it wasn't that I necessarily believed in myself. I believed in all the people around me. Like my mom would always say something like, if you're going to get revenge, like, like she's big on revenge to the right people. Right. So the person that like fucks me over, I don't get revenge on you go about your business. But the person that stood by me, like when you had a chance and it was raining outside and I'm standing in the rain, but you had a chance to go get shelter, but instead you chose to stand with me in the rain because you knew I needed someone you're my fucking ride or die and if you stood by me I'm getting revenge on you immediately I'm standing by you anything I can do as soon as I have money I'm supporting you whatever you fucking need so I get back everyone that stood next to me and I do as much as I possibly can for them right but in life I I just had my back against the wall and it was you're gonna do this and if you fuck up and you blow it you give them their money back you give that girl their money back right. and you figure out how you're gonna get this woman her 50 bucks and that's what I did hey man and that's what I do even with underwraps when I started it out. Hey, man, if, if in 90 days you don't like it, I'll train you for free for the next three months. Yeah. It, it, how can you say no to that? I'm, I'm going to take care of you. And if yeah. in the first 14 days you don't like it at all, take your money back. Maybe you don't like me. OK, take your money back. I'm not there's no hard sale or pressure anywhere. That's what you're faced with every day of your life, man. I'm just making this super chill and super easy. You know, this is an opportunity for you. Take it or leave it again. Ninety nine percent of people do fuck all. Yeah, agreed. So. We have about, we just have a few minutes left and I know we could talk all day <laughs> and we will. And uh, just as so everybody knows, Carrie and I were chatting about putting together an event. So we'll, uh, we'll let you know about that. I'll be announcing that there's a lot of things coming up at Warrior Women, but I ask all my guests when I ask them to be on and I say it's Warrior Women in Business and especially for you, <laughs> uh, what does that term mean to you? What kind of like images pop into mind? Lots of violence and weapons. <laughs> whatever you, whatever I, I, happens but... <laughs> it's a you know what life life is a battle if you choose it to be but it is like every day like you i it's a video game so like th <laughs> as things get harder you're evolving in your business and so don't look at that as oh my god why it was so easy you want to be what you want to be then you're gonna have to face shit and you're going to have to get the fuck up and you're going to have to face it. And you're not going to handle everything well. And you're not going to do everything right. And half the shit's not going to go the way you want it to. But you're going to evolve through it, right? When you're at your hardest moments, the boss round at Mario Kart, you got like the, the penguins <laughs> throwing daggers at you. Yeah. You got the walrus in the center. You're at the, you're at the, the boss round. It's the hardest one, but you're going to get through it. And then just remember what happens after that. The first two rounds are easy because now you got like magnets or like apple bombs or something. So they're going to let the first two rounds be pretty chill with these new weapons. And you're going to feel pretty awesome. And then it gets harder and harder as it goes. It's business. Business is a video game. Life is a video game, right? So if you are struggling or if there is, if that's happening, you're evolving. And so embrace it. As much as you embrace the good times, embrace the bad times because you wouldn't have the good times if you didn't have the bad. And mostly don't judge it. It's another day for me to face whatever opportunity comes my way and to evolve as I need to. And if I fuck up, I'll do, if I can just do 1% better tomorrow, that's some, that's it. So I keep my, you know, you just keep it small and mellow. And just, again, it's the same thing. I, I would not be where I am if I didn't fail more than every other person around me. They all fail. They lick their wounds. They all, what am I going to do? I've already been homeless, kids. It ain't that bad. Listen, you figure it out you find your way, but you're not going to go homeless. That's not how bad it is for you. But from someone that went to the end, like anything that could happen to a female has happened to me. Like I've been through all of it. So what? So you did some shit to my body. Yeah, it sucked. I got through it. Right. And I'm here now. And now I'm giving other people opportunity so that they can learn the things that they need to learn in a, a supportive and a safe place. You're not judged. I feel fat. I'm sorry. You feel that way. Let's talk about it. Like, is it the food you're eating? Maybe is a little bit soft. like what? Man, you listen, you have a feeling. Cool. I mean, but just remember in your mind, when you get caught in your feelings, the balance of emotion is logic. So if you're caught in your emotions, is it, a paper, or is it a real tiger? And then you just start logic out. 
Like this isn't my great, like when my interns would go, I'm scared to go to an art director. Why are they, do they have your grandma in a shelter where they're gonna, I always would go, is she cutting off her ear? Are you Van going your grandma? <laughs> no, grandma's fine. So what's the worst that happens? They say no. Yeah. Doesn't sound so bad. Okay, you Grandma's still cool. People saying no to you. <laughs> yeah, so what? Good. In life and in business. Okay. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for uh, my my old marketer used to say to me, because Rolling Stone, I remember them. I had thought I wanted to work there until I found out what they paid. And then I said no. But um, yeah, they, that's the company that I know traditionally doesn't pay. Terrible, them. terrible pay. Ter it's a joke. Jo anyway, no offense. Sorry for anyone that works. <laughs> I'm sure you're great. Um, but like with them, they would they when I first started sending out my mailers, they unsubscribed. And I was like, oh. Oh, I'm never going to get in. And she was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You pay per email or you send out. So thank you for editing yourself out of my life and saving me a little bit of money. Because trust me, you're going to start seeing my work and then you're going to be knocking on my door. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Right. Um, and I said no, because I heard the rate and I was like, no, maybe when I first started out, that would have been fine. But now, no, I'm I'm not, I'm not volunteering as a, as a business owner. I I'm have you on money. That, yeah. So I can help other people. I give 10% of everything I make a month to someone else, someone that's struggling, some organization, whatever it is, local, whatever, but 10% of everything I make every single month, everything the gym makes, everything I make, everything under apps makes 10% is always given away. Always. That's the first thing I do with my money. 10% goes to help someone else. If I'm in the position to do so, if I am not going to eat for the rest of the week, the 10% We'll sit for a second. It's okay. What I will share instead is a smile, a compliment. I'll put something nice on someone saying, I believe in you. You got this. That's just as valuable as a hundred bucks, right? Sometimes more so. And and I like that you talked, well, you talked about so many things today, but reciprocity, you know, no, I loved it. Um, reciprocity is so important uh, to pe for people to remember in business because it helps you think outside the box in situations where you could be stuck reciprocity I think also is important when you're networking with other women when you're meeting other women to think about I always say I mean it's really about the other person so I think that that's such an no one's really talked about that on the podcast I love that you brought it up because I think that's what can help a lot of these business owners stay in business think differently um and at the end of the day bring what we talked about on the last podcast was bring more kindness yeah <laughs> spring more kindness and right. just remember, if you did something nice for someone, they don't got to do shit for you. Nobody owes you closure and nobody owes you shit. So mm -hmm. never do it where you're like, hey, if I do this for you, you're going to do something for me. No, it's right. one thing. It's a business. It your heart. And I'm like, hey, I'll give you 50 bucks if you send someone my way. That's a business proposition. But if mm -hmm. I do something where I'm like, oh, I did this emailer for your business and it brought so many people in for you. They don't right. got to do shit for you. Nobody got to do but shit for you. You figure out your own fucking life. Do it for doing it. That's it. And like, yeah, if something comes back dope. You know, what's going to come back goodness because energy mm -hmm. is reciprocal. It's reciprocal. Everything you put out comes back. It's just the way the world works. So you put it out there. You don't worry about what, who's going to come back. I lent that person 20 bucks. They never paid me back. Oh, I was walking down the street and I found a hundred dollar bill. So you, that's of, happened to me so many times. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. I, you know what, something that always worked with me when you're really struggling. And this was like a big thing for me. I'd get a bill and I'd write the word, thank you on it. I didn't yeah. have them. I had no idea how I was going to pay it, but I wrote thank you because I knew that some, I knew within me because I have a hundred percent track record. I've gotten out of it every other time. I knew that I'd be able to pay that bill in some way or somehow, whether it was the minimum or whatever, I was going to do it because I've always done it. So instead of seeing the bill and going, Ooh, I saw the bill and I thought it grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful I'm in a position to have bills because when I lived on the street, I had nothing, right? So I got bills now because I've got a home because I've leveled up a little bit and I've stepped up a little bit. And yeah, I don't know how I'm going to pay it. And yeah, shit's really hard, but thank you. And so every time I looked at that bill, would want to start, but then I'd reread the word thank you. And I'd, thank you. Thank you. I know that somewhere. That's right. That's, and, that's, and, and that's what you're also talking about. Um, just, I want to kind of recap a few things that you brought up because there's been so many gold nuggets. <laughs> I want to thank you, first of all, but a couple, a few, a number of things I've learned that I, I know that the women that come to the events, the women that reach out to me, I think they can definitely take action. I'm an action person. Take Same. action on these items. Well, you're so, an Aries too, aren't you? You're an April birthday. No, I'm a Scorpio. We have oh, so that explains it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm a, wait, when is your birthday? What did you say? It's coming. It's in April. I'm an Aries. Aries. Right, well, but 
Fine. Ooh, maybe we can do our, our thing in April. But uh, I, April's a beautiful month. I, I got to say, in New York, it's a beautiful month. This is I, when you go out to the parks, right? Because this is the month when the flowers start blooming. And as we were talking about pre-podcast, the birds are chirping. April's a beautiful month. So, but a few things I want to talk about. So first of all, um, I love what you talked about in terms of logic, <laughs> Logic and emotion and the balance, because a lot of times as business owners or women in, I know so many women in entertainment, <laughs> women in entertainment, especially, and a lot of women in business, female entrepreneurs that are creating things, emotion drives the business. So these checkpoints that you mentioned in terms of assessing logic in an emotional decision I think it can be taken. It's a very important thing that people should take action on helping others, whether it's a business deal, as you mentioned, which is I have found I've had my main agency for 17 years, just so you know, Carrie. And the reason that I've had that is through a lot of reciprocity. I and it and it helps to drive impact. That's my main goal is driving impact. And I think we can we can all do that at every level. So I love every level. Like every, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, whatever, whatever, or in between. I don't even know what that looks like in today's political climate. And I don't really talk about politics, but, but, you know, whatever that means. Um, you talked about, I love that you talked about when your back's up against the, the ropes, I see it, <laughs> your back's up against a wall and how you have to think about how you might want to make a move to get out of that. But you're always learning. You're always a student. That's another thing that I think is very important in today's world of, you know, promoting yourself. I mean, I do personal branding, you know, selfies, like sharing your best stories, but also sharing the failures. So I love that you shared the failure failures with us today and be, and you're proud of them. I mean, that's. I'm so proud of my thing. failures. I would be proud, proud of them of the failures <laughs> is something that you don't really see that often in terms of real authentic people talking about it, you know? Yeah. The um, failure is the answer. So just and that. And, and one book, I think if people really are doing the social media thing and that makes them nervous, it's uh, I think it's called hook point by Brendan Kane. That's a good one. The 32nd world. That one's a good one to help you out. Cause it talks a lot about pers there's five personality types in the whole world. Pixar does it perfectly. BMW does it perfectly. And honestly, the only president we've ever had that did it perfectly was Bill Clinton. Um, but if you really want to reach an audience and you're dealing coming from a place of emotion, it's not going to do so well. Like I'm, I'm fiery, I'm feisty, I'm a force, but I don't like emotion. All this feeling and the generation right now sitting in their feelings, I don't like it. You know, you did this to me, you did it. Stop it. Right? I don't like it. You know, <laughs> it gets I'm in the way like, of progress. I like humor. I like rebellion. I like logic. Yeah. Right. So I like that shit. But uh, but when you talk to people, it's good to understand like, hey, I have to talk to a bunch of different people. So I got to make sure my points hurt. So I could say something like, you know, like that's why they said Bill Clinton did so good, because he could come out and be like, I know that all of you guys are suffering right now. And I'm so sorry for what your families have to face. If we look at the statistics, we can see this happening. And wouldn't you all like to go to the dinner table like that? And he would do it. And so in three, just like BMW ads, in four to five sentences, you can target every single personality type out there. So just mm -hmm. remember that just your service industry, you're finding something that the world needs to make it a better place, right? And technology, all it does is try and get us easier ways to do that. Sometimes it makes it harder, but um, that's it. So take you out of it. You're there for someone else, whether you're there to cut their hair or you're there to do their taxes or you're there to uplift them. Um, you're there for them. And that's mm -hmm. the most important thing. So when the emotions get high, good. You're learning how to handle it because guess what? You're going to have a client in six months going through what you're going through. So while you're walking through the valley of hell, you get that fucking notebook out, you get that pen out and you start making notes because you're now going to give a sermon on this to your people and you're going to help them so they never have to go through it. If you want to be a leader and you want to be a healer, then you fucking make sure that you are ready to stand in hell because you will be put through it because you must put the shoes on to help other people. Otherwise you're a fucking fraud. Like I, I can't tell a mom I, to raise a kid. I never had a kid. You know, mm -hmm. I can't tell a black person what it's like to be black in America. I'm Caucasian. Right. So I know where my lines are and that is where I can talk and hear, but there are things that I have put the shoes on. And so those are things that I can help and do. So just remember that if you're like, I'm constantly in hell, guess what? You're a healer 
and you're a leader and with great power comes great responsibility. And you must have a superhero moment. Every superhero in every movie has a moment where it's over, it's over. And it's only 20 okay, minutes in, so you know it's coming, right? <laughs> But yeah. you have to have that moment too. And you're gonna have a lot of them because that's your gift in life. You can change your passion a million times. You can change your journey a million times, but you're gonna have that moment where everything's falling apart. That's when it falls together. It's a superhero moment. It's a meridian moment where nothing behind you is the same as to the person you're gonna be moving forward. Don't shy from that. Don't hide from that. Don't drug that out. Embrace that, love that, walk into that, become that. That is what is gonna turn you into what you need to become. If you wanna lead people, then you need to understand life. And in order to do that, you're gonna be put through some trials. So if you want the responsibility of being a leader, of being a business owner, of doing more in this world, then that responsibility comes with a very hot walk where you're gonna be learning a lot of shit. And so when everything is on you, yes, guess what? The universe deemed you strong enough to handle it. The universe deemed you powerful enough to go through it. The universe knows that what you're going to learn now, you're going to save a thousand people from. So don't yes. think I'm doing this for me because so many of women were givers. I'm doing this, this I'm going through this because I'm going to be able to help others. I'm learning from this so I can lift others because so much of the time when it feels like it's just us, it's like, oh my God. But then you go, wait, my sisters, my cousins, my mothers, my friends. All right. I'm strong enough to take it. I don't want them to go through this. They're beautiful people. I'll take it. And then when yeah. they're faced with it, I'm there to help them through. I'll stand in the rain with them now, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. just remember that it's power. That's power. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I love it. I love it. Um, and that's and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know give a little bit of what's coming up in Warrior Women in Business, but I do want to say that um, that's a lot of a lot of reasons that I know that other women I used to box with. That's why they got in the ring. Uh, they were looking for a positive outlet instead of going to the woman you mentioned with beta blockers and I don't even know what those are. Drugs, alcohol. I didn't know what it was either. I had to Google oh, it. Is that? But anyway, you know, the point is having <laughs> positive outlets, whether it's a physical outlet or a community that you can go to and help. So yep. we have something I want to talk, I want to kind of mention a few things that are coming up um, that really do support this Women's History Month and the intention and the growth of warrior women about bringing women like Carrie on to give you advice, women that have been there and done that to help you move forward. I mean, today we talked about moving forward in business, but we also talked about moving forward in life, which is you can't move forward in business unless you can move forward in life. So it's really important. So on May 19th, um, we, warrior women is a partner in a gala event called Me Amor Gala. It's being held at the Plaza Hotel and it's run by woman Luisa Diaz, who's my last podcast guest. And in 10 years, I don't know, they've raised, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to support um, the end of domestic violence through multiple organizations, as well as the end of human trafficking. And Victor actually is doing a um, oil painting donation for that. Warrior women, uh, warrior women, oil painting. Uh, we're very excited about it. Yep. So we do, we do what we can here to help to help women. Um, so if any of you are interested in uh, being involved with the gala or attending the gala, you know you can check out Warrior Women in Business. Carrie and I are talking about putting together an event, uh, and I'm very excited about it. I kind of see it as a way that for those of you that women that have never ever put gloves on or don't know anything about, about boxing, you'll be happily surprised about how it helps you, you know, it, just learning about it. It's just a, such an interesting, I think it's a science personally. Yeah. And um, so we're, we're going to be planning an event and possibly with another Warrior Women member partner of ours um, to make a real fun, interesting, embracing community developing day. Warrior Women is all about that. We actually have an entire partner program for any of you that are interested that you might have an interesting business or a new project and you're like, hey, I want to do something to help women. I want to bring women together. I want to promote my business. Just reach out to us. Reach out to me. I'm more than all ears if it's something interesting that can help women. Uh, this has been a great, great month. We have some amazing guests coming up and I'm not even going to mention them because I can't believe they're going to be on the podcast. We have somebody... Um, an ex-general from the U.S. Army <laughs> that's coming on. And we have a major person in martial arts that I can't mention yet, but I'm going to be mentioning her soon. And other women in business that are coming up. So the podcast moves forward. We move forward in our businesses. 
And I encourage all of you to get out and meet other women in business, support them, go to Carrie's gym, you know, come to the events, you know, let's buy each other's products and services. Let's help each other. And, and, and Under Wraps is a virtual. So uh, I have right. a lot of people that are starting businesses, but also are going through shit. So that's a virtual boxing club where you meet with me every month. So uh, there's another one where, I mean, not every month, every week, uh, but that's another opportunity. If you're like, hey, I kind of vibed with what you're saying. I want to feel, I want my grit. I want to feel all these amazing things, but I need someone that either I can talk to or work out with or whatever. Um, I, I have 10 people right now. I've just got to start their business next week. They're opening doors. So, um, you guys, there's that opportunity. It's all virtual. So you don't need to be near me, but if you are, you better get your ass to Brooklyn. It's called jukebox NYC. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to thank you for, I'm sorry that I didn't mention that. So we're in the show notes. Uh, this, all our episodes are edited so that you can come back because there's so many gold nuggets of information, but furthermore in the show notes, we'll have links, any promotions you want to put on there, any events, we'll put it all in the show notes. All of you will get that information. Please uh, sign up for our email, warriorwomenbusiness.com. Follow us on social media, engage with us, share information. Uh, it's all about sharing and caring and partnering. So again, uh, we are Warrior Women in Business. We're signing off from episode 54. I can't believe it. You're Women's amazing. History Month, and uh, I really want to thank Carrie, and I'm sure we'll be seeing you either virtually through Under Wraps or in the gym at our event, so look up for that. Again, my name is Jasmine Sandler. Thank you so much for tuning in to Warrior Women in Business.